Hello Year 7, we are now in week 6 of Term 6, so that means that the summer holidays are nearly here. We are continuing with our focus on Africa. This week our aims are to quickly show you how to log into Caboodle, recap prior learning this term, and then introduce the Africa project. Resources required, as always you're going to need that Caboodle textbook online, the task instruction sheet, and any line paper or an exercise book. So these next slides are going to be showing you how to access Caboodle as usual. Now by now you should all be experts at doing this. So I will not give any audio for this. I will flick through these next slides and you can pause them as you choose, but you shouldn't need to do this. You should already be very familiar with Caboodle. Okay, and finally, there's the video on YouTube that you can watch if you're still having trouble accessing Caboodle. So, prior learning, part one of prior learning. We've got a quick five questions for you to go through. What I want you to do is tap into that memory of yours, improve that memory, and avoid reading the previous pieces of work you've already done. So you need to try your best to try and remember the answers to these questions. What you will need to do is just write quick answer, you don't need to write the questions out, you don't need to write full sentences, it's just to jog your memory. Five minutes on this slide, pause this slide and answer those questions. Okay, so you should have now answered those questions and you have pressed play. The answers to those questions that you've just had a go at are as follows. If you did not get any of the answers right, make sure you make a note of those now, so get those written down. You can pause this slide to do that. Okay, part two, you can have four or five minutes on this slide. You will need to do the same again. Just quick quiz to jog your memory, answer these questions, get them jotted down. Press pause for five minutes while you do this. Okay, you press play, you should have answered those questions by now. Up on the right hand side are the answers. If you haven't got the answers correct, then make a note of those now. We have some key terms that we need to be familiar with today. Um, I want you to be aware of these key terms so that you can choose your topic. You might need these to help you choose your topic. We have rural and urban. Now we have looked at these before year seven. So what I want you to do now is try and answer these key terms. Try and write your definitions down for these words. Pause this slide for a few minutes while you write your own definitions down. Okay, well done. So you should have your own definitions written down now. If they are very similar to the ones on the screen, then that is excellent, perfect, well done. If they are different, if you did not know them, you need to correct them. So write down what you see on the screen if you did not get those completely correct. Another key term we need to be familiar with is desertification. This is where the land is being turned into desert, often through overuse. Now, this is a simple definition for you. And as part of one of your topics, you'll need to look at desertification in more detail. Next up, we are going to look at how to access the topics or the projects on Caboodle itself. So you should all be experts with accessing that now. We'll be pros at accessing Caboodle by now. Here you will see some tabs in the top right hand corner. Resources is the one you want to be clicking on. 
then you will see a screen something like the one I have up here. But your left tab here will start at the top. We are on unit 10, so you need to scroll down all the way down to number 10, focus on Africa, click on that one there. Then you will see this. Two week topic, Africa. So you click on that. It's a topic that will take you about two weeks to do. So we don't intend for you to spend all of your summer doing this. So it's got some information about what you'll be doing. So you choose an aspect to explore. It can be about population, the Sahara, or Nigeria. You have the freedom to decide which one to do. You also have the freedom to decide how to present your project. You can use some resources and activities on Caboodle to start your research. So you can use Caboodle as somewhere to start, but the intention is for you to go forth Go on the internet and see what else you can find. So when you click next, you'll see this screen. It will tell you how to start your project. You'll click one of these that you want to explore. So population, it will tell you all about the aspects that you have to cover when choosing population as your topic. The bit in bold here, these three lines where it says Africa is a very diverse continent with many different ethnic groups, languages and religions. There is also a wide gap between the poorest and wealthiest communities. This is your title for your project. So this is what you'll be addressing. You're going to be answering the following topic questions. There you have a couple of questions. Now, you need to look at all three of these and see which one applies to you. Which one do you want to do? Do you want to look at the population of Africa? These are the aspects you'll cover. Do you want to look at the Sahara? These are the aspects you will cover. Do you want to look at Nigeria? These are the final aspects you can choose to cover from. So have a read through those. Use those key terms if you're not sure what some of the things mean. Okay, so we've got rural and urban. We've got the key terms to understand that. Certification, we've got that key term. So you should be okay with understanding what the projects are asking of you. So click next once you've picked one. You need to think about how you might present your projects. So here you've got some project ideas. You can use a colourful poster map. You can use a diary entry. So an example of this would be a blog of someone living in Lagos, Nigeria. One of the busiest cities in the world, 21 million people. Quite a cool city. Uh, you can do a poem or a song about a journey through the Sahara, Sahara Desert. What would you see? What would you do? What would you feel? Where would you go? You can also look at the other three ideas down there. Now, planning your project is really, really important. Make sure you thoroughly plan your project before you start to undertake it. So the choice of topic may determine the type of project you will create. So we looked at a diary entry. So that might not be applicable for thinking about the population of Africa or the population. OK, so so think about which type of project presentation will match the type of project that you're going to do. Think creatively about your final choice of project. So we want you to be as creative as possible. A few ideas. So you can do art, poetry, music all writing, all to address these questions that we're going to be covering. You could try a new skill, so you can maybe do an animation or video, but be realistic about what you can create in the time you have available. So we're aiming for this to take you about two weeks. Now, we don't want you to spend your whole summer on it, as I've already said. You might be limited by materials and resources you have access to. So if you're at home, you have loads of siblings, or maybe even just one, and you're sharing this laptop with your mum um, or whoever's looking after you and you're sharing it with your siblings or whoever else you might live with, then you might need to think twice about editing a video because it might take you too long. You might need to think twice about using the computer too much. You might have to limit your time on the computer. So plan to spend up to 50% of your time researching the project. Don't trust everything you read on the internet. Not everything can be trusted out there. The web is an excellent resource. It's excellent for research. It's excellent for projects such as these. But you cannot always trust what you will find. So be careful when you're choosing your resources.
what makes a good project. So before you submit it, before you send it off to me, as always, send it to my email. Check that you've answered the topic questions. This checklist will help you to ensure that you've answered those questions. So always refer back to this guidance on Caboodle. This will ensure that you make the best project that you are able to. Now, I'm really looking forward to seeing your projects. And if you follow this checklist, I will have to give out lots of stars to a few of you, I guess. So follow this carefully and you'll be rewarded handsomely. Take a look at these resources and activities on Caboodle to start with your research. So these are really good, actually. So you can see your student book. This is what you've been using um, for quite a while now. This is where you read the text and you understand the topic. You can click on this and it will take you straight to the chapter that you need. Focus on Africa. And then you will be able to click through all of the relevant pages. So I've clicked on it. Focus on Africa. What is Africa like? So this is how we started the unit off. This is the first page that we saw when we started this unit. So then you can click through and find all of the relevant information that you will need to answer those questions in your project. So African populations, the Sahara, Nigeria. Okay, so you can click through and find all that information there. Close that back down and get back to here. So this other tab, animations, this is really clever actually. So if you click on these links here, it will tell you all about these skills and it will tell you exactly how to do them, what they mean um, and what the use of them is. So you've got comparer maps, climate graphs and population pyramids. Okay, so if you don't understand climate graphs, you can click on this. It will open up a new tab here and then you will see a video. This animation is explained by climate graphs are useful, how to draw it and how to interpret it. In this skills pod, you will learn why climate graphs are useful, how to draw a climate graph, and how to interpret a climate graph. There you go, simple as that. That video will go up to three and a half minutes and show you all of that information. Then you click next and you can do the little quiz, which will just help you understand whether you've got what that video was showing you or not. So as I said, you can do that for any of these three things. Extension activities. Now, it's really good when I see extension activities. Anyone that gets onto extension activities for these topics will be rewarded with stars. So these worksheets may help you to answer your topic questions or can be completed as extension activities. If you're unable to print it, don't worry. Just use another bit of paper, write out those questions, write out those answers, make sure they're full sentences as always. Okay, so that is how you'll access that resource in Caboodle. Okay, we so pros at accessing. We have looked at how to access all the resources that you'll need through Caboodle. When is it due? The project will be due the week beginning the 7th of September. So that is actually the second week back at school in the new term after the summer holidays. So that gives you this week that we are currently in, the last week of term. And then it gives you the first week of term when we return to school. Your teacher for your subject for geography will give you a precise date that you will need to hand that project in. So make sure you get that written down in your log books because I would not want you to miss that opportunity to get all this hard work that you completed into us. Now you can present your information in many different ways. Artwork might be a way that you would like to choose. Here we have a, an example of some artwork. This is a little model village, I do believe. And within this village, you've got lots of resources. Maybe you could use that to talk about the resources 
of Africa in one of your projects if you think that is relevant. Um, but make sure your piece of artwork has a piece of written work with it because we would like to display some of this artwork and we need to understand what it is showing us. You need to give us some context is what we would call that. You need to help us to understand what your piece of artwork is representing. School displays, I really like this as an idea. Um, these are very useful for the school to display and we like to use these at open evenings when the school has open evenings. You can see here on this display, this is a science one, there are lots of good images there, lots of diagrams, lots of text, lots of good information, and I really like the use of colour in this display. Here is another one, nice and colourful, lots of writing again, so there's lots of good information. There are photographs and diagrams and clear headings. It's nicely divided with clear headings. Another way that you can present your information would be with an information poster. This is by no means an easy option. You can see here is an example of an information poster. This is a scientific one about the heart and blood. We know that because it's got a nice clear heading at the top there, which is what I would want you to do on yours if you were to do an information poster. It has lots of nicely divided sections with clear headings good diagrams, clear writing, and it's easy to read. So there's not too much color behind that writing. Here's another good example, lots of writing, a clear heading. You've got different sections that are divided with images and those headings there. You've got diagrams and photos, very good example. Another one, climate change causes and effects. We know that this poster is about that because it's got a nice clear heading again nicely divided into separate sections, good photographs, good use of colour. Again, the writing is easy to read. So if you were to do an information poster, make sure you have a look at these examples and aim to set yours out in a similar kind of way. You need a good similar balance of writing with images. Do not do anything like this if you're going to do a poster. This is a campaign poster. There is by no means enough information on this poster at all. There's no way that is enough information. So if you're going to do a poster, do not do it like this or like this. There's not enough information in this one either. So as always with these recorded lessons that you find online, there is a big question. Today's big question is which topic are you going to be tackling for your project and why? You need to pick from the three options you have and you need to tell us why you're going to tackle these and why. You'll need to email your answer to your geography teacher just so that we know what you're going to be covering. Remember, we're here to help. So you can email us with any questions you have um, about anything to do with the project at all can email your individual teachers. Now we're really looking forward to receiving your projects. Remember if you have any questions we are here. There are some useful resources for you. Here are three examples. You've got BBC Bite Size that you might be familiar with already. We've got another one called Kids World Travel Guide. That's really interesting. Lots of good facts on there about Africa and Ducksters.com. This is an amazing site with many facts as well. So all that's left for me to say is have a great summer. All the geography teachers are really looking forward to getting these projects. It's something we really like to set and we really like to see the pieces of work at the end of it. So um, make sure you put lots of good work into this. Have a great summer and enjoy some.